My name is Emily Lauren Dick, and I'm 32 from Burlington, Ontario, in Canada. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Her Story TV and the Her Story podcast. This is Gertrude Macha here in beautiful Wellington, New Zealand, and I'm graced with the presence of yet another fascinating young woman coming to us from the other side of the world. Welcome to our tribe. Please tell everybody your full name, where you're based, how old you are, and share your story with us today. Absolutely. So my name is Emily Lauren Dick, and I'm 32 from Burlington, Ontario in Canada. And I wrote the book called Body Positive, A Guide to Loving Your Body, which is really a self-help guide with journal prompts, information about body image. Um, It has excerpts from people, women I interviewed, as well as photographs of 75 women that I photographed for the book. Um, So really what inspired me to write this book was when I was in university and really learned about the reasons why we come to have negative body image and that there's this actual system in place. And I really wanted to make this information accessible to everyone because I thought that You know, the earlier we learn about this as as young girls and as women, the better prepared, the more resilient we can be towards all the pressures that we face, um, you know, as we develop and and get on with our lives as as young women. So really, um, I think that it's meant for young women, but so many people have been saying that it doesn't matter what age you are, that this book can really teach you some important lessons about the person that you need to be. And, and that is yourself. And it's really to, you know, forget the standards that are, that are set forth um, for us and how we can break the cycle of promoting a uh, negative body image and, and really what we can do to, to change the way that women think about themselves. Um, you know, the now, is, this, really- is this based on a personal experience of yours? How did you come to this realization? How did you tell me a little bit about your personal yeah, experience? Absolutely. So for as long as I can remember, I have suffered from negative body image, Um, I never really had a full-blown eating disorder or anything like that, but um, really anyone who's been on a diet has partaken in some form of disordered eating. Um, So really, you come to think of it as something that's really a normal part of your life as a young woman, and and that's exactly how I felt until I went to university and learned about... um, my aha moment was when I learned about the male gaze, which was that women are the object of heterosexual male desire. And we feel like we need to sort of perform and act our lives as we're being watched. And it really, it it explains so much for me that I really wanted to dive in and, you know, figure out, peel away all the layers of why this is and, um, you know, the history behind it, but also the systems that uphold these these standards that we're all supposed to have to follow. Yeah, a lot of young women are under so much pressure these days with what they see in magazines, you know, social media influencers, and the so-called perception of beauty. Not knowing that most of these magazine covers are Photoshop, they're not exactly as they seem. Oh, exactly. And it gets, it's, it's been getting worse over the years. Like Mm -hmm. some of the studies I pulled up when I was doing my research for the book is just like, it seems people seem to be getting thinner and thinner in these, you know, media, media roles. And I mean, even to the point where now we're seeing just total, um, like creations, they're not even real women. They're just total, you know, scientific, um, constructions on online that, that you can make a woman out of your computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So what is your vision and your mission behind this book? Who is it geared for women of a certain age, young girls? What, what's your main demographic? 
Um, really, um, I focused on young women, um, you know, sort of tweens and teens, because I feel like that's that critical age where you can really understand a lot of what's going on. Um, I feel like, though, it's a tool that can be used by parents at any stage in the development of their child. Um, I have a three-year-old daughter, and I've been using the images as examples to, to show diversity and to show what normal bodies look like. You see scars, you see stretch marks, you see um, people that have amputations, disabilities, and I think it's really important to let them know that this is normal and this is what um, real people look like. Yeah, and, and as a role model, it's really your job to make sure that you are instilling this in your daughter, right? Exactly. So she doesn't have to face the same challenge and just grows up fully confident of whoever she is going to become. Absolutely. I feel like it's a little bit of a social experiment, you know, um, to, to really provide her with this information that I didn't have as a young girl and see, see what happens and, and how, you know, the young girls can, can change the future for, for the rest of the daughters that come after them. I love that. So what are the things that you cover in this book? Take us through a step-by-step -step process, things that people should be aware of. Absolutely. So um, the way the book is set up is there are certain topics that I cover, um, including the media, inspiration, bullying, harassment, um, different mental health issues, um, self-esteem. And then we talk a little bit more about um, the media and really some steps to be able to build that resiliency to challenge things. And, and a lot of it is really um, being introspective. You know, there's no quick fix to loving your body. It's, it's a process and it's something that you have to work at. And um, each chapter includes a little bit of information about each topic. Um, then it also includes some journal prompts. And then there are a bunch of real, real um, excerpts from interviews from different women, because I felt like all of us experience on, on some level negative body image, but I feel like we all experience it differently. It depends on our background, where we grow up, our opportunities, our privileges. And I think that by putting that in the book, I hope that someone sees something that resonates with them. And um, one of the things that I've been hearing a lot is like, it, it was very raw and very real. And I'm so thankful to my publisher that they let me just put those responses in um, because some of them are negative, right? Some of them are, I hate my body and mm -hmm. this is why. And then there's other you know, responses that I love my body or I'm repairing my, my um, relationship that I had with my body. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's really, really important. And, and that's sort of how it's set up. I love that. I like the repairing your relationship with your body. Um, you know, I'm recovering from heart failure from wow. 2017. And wow. I remember coming out of that experience and look at my looking at myself quite differently you know just taking for granted the fact that you wake up every day and you can breathe and everything is functioning in your in your lungs yes. the fact that you can look outside the window and see and you can hear and you can taste and you can touch so it is all about rebuilding the image that you have of yourself and I remember when I had my angiogram soon after I collapsed I could see the monitor in front of me of my heart and the dye was rushing into all of my veins. And I had a conversation with my heart and I said, you know, why are you doing this to me? Why is this happening? And my heart actually answered back and said, Gertrude, you have done this to me. I'm pumping oxygen and nutrients into every single cell in your body, but you have forgotten to take care of me. And that kind of helped me realize what I had actually done I was depressed, I was overweight, I wasn't exercising. And you're right, we do have to kind of reframe it and, and look at it from what it really is. Absolutely, self-care is such a, a, an important part and, and a big part of that is really having a good relationship with our body and being thankful for what it does for us instead of always focusing on the negative things and really 
changing the way we feel about it because our, our life, it's, it's our life vessel, you know, it allows mm. us to experience this world and it should be something that is so amazing. And yet there are so many women out there that, you know, would rather suffer than mm. feel like they don't measure up. Yeah. I've been on your, um, your Instagram account and I must say I was so impressed with the images that you showed of you. voluptuous women with their curves and their, you know, we, we forget that that is how the female body is built. We have these lumps, we have these bumps, we have these curves and yes. it's actually our responsibility to celebrate it and to share that. I agree. And, and so often we try to hide these things. And I think that the way the systems are set up is that they segregate us from, from one another. So we feel like we're the only ones who have stretch marks and yes. lines and dimples and scars and things like that. Whereas when we see them, it reminds us that we're normal. And I think it's <laughs> so important to see real images of women that aren't edited and that are unfiltered and, mm. you know, just showcase that it's so easy to see the beauty in someone else, right? Yeah. <laughs> and ourselves. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk a little bit about media and yes. the influence that media has on especially young women growing up. What needs to change there? I think, first of all, we need to see unedited images in the media. I think that's a, a huge thing. Um, you know, we're already dealing with the people who are often featured in the media already fit a certain ideal. You know, they're thin, they're perfect looking, they have big breasts, you know. Um, there's all these things that they are already. So when we then Photoshop them even more, it's, it's so problematic. So I think the first step really is unediting. And then we need to start seeing more diverse bodies in the media. And I'm not just talking about plus size women, because most of the plus size models out there are, are straight size. They're just bigger versions of these ideal women that we're so used to seeing in the media. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's really important that we see diversity so we don't feel the pressure to become something that we're not. I love that. Yeah, it, it is a, a huge responsibility. And I think more people who are in the media industry should be taking on that responsibility as well. Because we're all parents, we're all mothers, we're all fathers who have daughters, who have sons, because this is not just a problem for no, girls these days, boys as well. Exactly. And I mean, I think, um, you know, boys, they they get this impression of what women should look like as well. And I think teaching them that, oh, well, I'm I'm not masculine enough if I don't have someone who looks like this or they feel guilty or ashamed because they actually don't care that much about stretch marks and things like that. You know, it's 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 really important. And the media has a huge responsibility to play in this. Um, I'm actually just um, starting to work with an organization called Live Life Unfiltered. And one of uh, the things we're gonna be working on this, this year and, and very shortly is a new campaign addressing, um, you know, sort of demanding these changes be, be seen in, in the media and, and start to create a solution for the next step on how we can get media or advertisers to be held a little bit more responsible for what they're putting out there um, with everything being so filtered. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good luck with that. Um, I do you. hope that it, it spreads and it brings an awareness of our needs for, for change. Now, if I was to take you into your future, let's say you're now a hundred years old and you're sitting in your rocking chair with your little daughter and she's a mom and she has her kids, your grandchildren. And you could look back at your life based on how you're living your life right now. What would you say to that younger woman? I think I would be pretty proud of all the things that I have been working towards. When I started this project, I always said, if I just help one person, 
that's what I started with. And now I want to help more people, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like Mm -hmm. as, as the book has gone out into the world and I'm getting feedback, um, you know, I sort of, I, I crave that, that hearing those things, you know, that you've made a difference in my life that I didn't think about things that way before. And at the end of the day, if I have done more of that, then I will have lived such a good life. And I hope my daughter grows up confident and not concerned or not as concerned at least with, with her appearance as, you know, so many of us have, have grown up. Oh, I love that. That is absolutely beautiful. No, thank you so much for coming online and, and sharing your knowledge and your wisdom with us. Where can people actually buy your book? So you can purchase it basically anywhere um, that you can get a book. Um, so Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, all those great places. Um, but you can go to my website, happydaughter.com. And there's a bunch of links there to, to get it. Um, okay. And yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Emily. It was such a pleasure meeting you. Good luck with your book. Thank you. And um, thank you to everybody who tuned in today. Be back again tomorrow for the Her Story podcast. This is Gertrude Mache in beautiful Wellington, New Zealand. Have a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Bye for now. Thanks, Emily. Thank you so much for having me.